Hello, Bill. Another beautiful day. Yeah. Or night. <laughs> Hope you're all doing good and your, and your health and strength is good. All right. Look. Listen, you I listen, listen, you Mac users. You and your you and your iPhone, your iPad, and your iTouch, and your i this and your i that. <laughs> you and your i things. <laughs> so selfish. <laughs> Look, uh, before you guys, when you guys talk about phones, just remember this. Samsung had the world's first biggest phone, and this is a Samsung Mega. Remember that. The world's first biggest phones was a. Uh, uh, Sam, Samsung. Just remember that. So when, so when you get, so when you Apple users go to your seminars and you're listening to your "I had a dream" speech, just remember Samsung had the world's first biggest phone. Remember that. <laughs> anyway, look, I'm sitting here looking, uh, looking at this article here. It's on PC Magazine here. It says uh, Apple just made it, uh, made it harder, made it harder to get close. Made it hard to get a, get a lost or stolen phone repaired. But my question to Apple, what took them so long? They should have been did this since their first iPhones. But eh, they, they're they're finally learning. But anyway, it says your technicians will technicians will now be alerted if an iPhone has been reported stolen, reporting missing before they start a repair. See, here's our problem though. See, people people misplace things. People lock themselves out their cars, out their house. They drop their keys, they drop their wallets, and they drop their phones. Now, if you if you did that, that don't mean your phone is stolen. That that's on you because you misplaced it or you dropped it. Now, if you misplace and you drop it, and you say you stuck, then, then you were, then you tell Apple that it's stolen, then that look bad on you. So yeah, stop lying. Anyway, <laughs> says your. Uh, Apple has implemented a new policy that means any iPhone report as missing will no longer be serviced or repaired at either an Apple store or an Apple authorized service provider, AASP. As Mac Rumor report, an internal memo sent out by Apple explained how technicians will now be able to see a message on their internal mobile Genius or GS, GSX system flagging an iPhone as missing or that the technician must be must decline to carry out the repair but it seems Apple isn't going any further than that so the customer will be able to leave with the phone still broken hmm. Apple is relying on the GSMA device registry for information regarding iPhones reported as missing it is a global registry allowing individuals to report their devices either missing or stolen. In response to the mobile industry, an associated sector can react accordingly, assuming they look at the registry. Hmm. Says here, the new policy begs the question, why did, why did it take Apple so long for Apple to do this? And if your iPhone was stolen or turned up at an Apple store for a, for a repair, would you want Apple to simply decline the repair or seize the phone. Perhaps there's a good reason Apple won't go that far, but I did did a certain appreciate my stolen phone being found and kept by Apple or an AS AASP. Look, um, look, like I told you before, people people misplace things. People drop their phones. People lock themselves lock they lock lock themselves out their own cars. People misplace their wallet. Uh, people uh, misplace their phone, or they lost it themselves. But if any any of that situation happened, and you know about it, then your phone or is not stolen. It's you that misplaced it, and you forgot where you put it. You know. Um, but if your phone is stolen, then you know. Um, it's, it, it's good that Apple came up with the policy. So, uh, so, uh, so, so the, um, so the phone don't, so the phone don't get worked on or information is, uh, leaked out, you know? So, um, <clears throat> or maybe Apple need to, uh, you know, maybe Apple need to come up, come up with a, 
with a uh, with a with a way like if your phone is if misplaced or sto stolen, so to speak, that the phone go shuts off. It goes into like a it goes dead. You know, you can you, you can't activate it. And the way you re reactivate it is like if you call Apple and say, okay, I misplaced my phone, or I dropped it, or or it's been stolen, then if based on the based on the insurance that you got with your phone, then you should be able to get a new one, and then with your with your code and your password, you should be able to bring up your all your information on a new phone because you have it saved in the cloud somewhere, you know. So maybe Apple need to look into that. But other than that, man, um, you know. If your phone is stolen, that's one thing. But if you misplaced it and you drop it, and then you turn around and say it's stolen, then that look bad on you. So make make sure you know the difference. So, um, but other than that, uh, this was a good move on Apple's part, you know. But why did it take them so long? It's beyond me. They should have been. This should have been a priority since their first iPhone. But I guess better late than never. I guess. <laughs> Anyway, um, one person here say, uh, he said, uh, credit card companies can seize cards reported lost or stolen because they own the card. They're seizing their property. A lost or stolen phone is still the property of the person who purchased the phone. Apple isn't a law enforcement agency and has no right to seize property of others, so they can't very well go take a phone someone else has brought in whether that phone is stolen or not. The, the workaround is for a lost or stolen phone to be purchased back by Apple. And when an iPhone is reported lost or stolen, the device can be purchased by Apple for a small fee. Uh, for example, a dollar. At that point, the iPhone belongs to Apple and it's, and it's or those acting as its legal agent License repair centers, that's in parentheses, says can take possession of the device as Apple owns it. Now, of course, Apple reports the notion of leasing instead of selling their iPhones to end users could very well have language in agreement starting that ownership of the device never transferred to the end user with possession of the phone, that the phone never stopped belonging to Apple. That's that is a sword that cuts two ways to think about <laughs> in in a comment. But you know what? Um, you know, to me, Apple need to have a cloud, uh, like a cloud system. You know, like when you use your phone, you save all your information in the cloud. So if your phone is lost or stolen, it goes dead, right? But once it goes dead, that means no one can operate it or fix it. But if you have like a insurance or a warranty on your phone, then when you buy the new phone, you put you put your you put your 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 the name and the password of your cloud storage account, and that way you can reaccess all the information that you had had saved. That's one way to go about it, you know. Um, but this but. But this is still a good move by Apple, but to me, they should have been did this back when they had the iPods and like their first generation of iPhones. They should have been had this, but I guess better late than never, I guess, <laughs> you know? <laughs> anyway, um, let me know your thoughts on this. What I'm going to do is just leave a link in the description box with this article. Nice talking to you people again. Chris, still a Star Wars and Star Trek thing. Or Dark Sanctuary.